as it still is a software for the design of steel members and connections. It includes the design of biaxial base plates and the anchorage. But how do you actually work with the software? How do you enter the information? How do you specify the loads and the geometry and material properties? How do you check the results? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to review the graphical user interface of the base plates and anchorage design module in ASIP Steel 5. Let's get started. When you open ASIP Steel, you see the project manager where you can see all the modules included in the package. Today we're going to focus on the anchorage and base plate design. To create a calculation, just click on the button, assign a name, any name, click Add and the calculation has been added to the tree. To open the calculation, you just double click on the node. And this is the template of the base plate design module in ASIP Steel. ASIP Steel includes a built-in database of the AISC Steel sections. Just click on this button, and from the database you can specify the Steel section that you are interested in. When you click on the Select button, the highlighted section will be used in the calculations. Alternatively, you can specify a user-defined column where you specify the width and the length manually. In addition here, you specify the base plate dimensions, width and length, and the concrete support. As you can see, the base plate can be placed eccentrically on the concrete support. Graphically, if you go to the graph tab, the tension breakout. In this example, the base plate is eccentric on the concrete support. If we go back to the at a glance tab, here we can see a summary of the results just in one screen. Here you can see immediately if everything is passing or if something is failing. In this particular example, there are two deficiencies. Here we can see that the shear design ratio is over. Also, the combined stress ratio is over. So this way we can see exactly where the problem is. If we go now to the materials tab, in this screen we can specify the material properties for the base plate and the anchor rods. At the top of the page, there's a section for the seismic provisions. If we click on the Show Parameters button, we can see the seismic parameters. Here we specify the SDS and the overstrain factor omega zero. Here at the bottom are the options to include the seismic provisions in tension and shear design. Here you enter the material properties for the support, F'C for the concrete, Fy for the rebars. The material properties for the base plate, FY. And here there's an option to force the base plate to remain elastic. This is recommended to ensure the strain compatibility, which is the assumption for the design of base plates. And it's also consistent with the current ACI concrete anchoring provisions. Here at the bottom you specify the number, the size, and the material properties of the anchor rods. In the program, the end rods are located outside the column flanges. Side rods are located between the column flanges. And here you specify the numbers of the end rods and their side rods. Here you specify the, the diameter of the rods. And here the material properties. If we go to the Condense tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations. They are grouped by topic and by load combinations. So this is very useful for a more granular check of your design. If we go now to the Loads tab, here you specify the loads applied on the base plate. At the top you can specify whether the loads are a single set of pre-combined loads or a set of nominal uh, load cases and as they will combine them internally. The first option is useful when you have the reactions of a frame. They are already combined somewhere else. So you input the, the loads here directly. The second option is when you have the uh, load cases and you want to combine them internally in ASIP steel. The design can be per ASD or LRFD. In this example, I have entered uh, some actual loads, uh, dead and live, and some bending moments in both directions. So this plate is biaxial, and also some uh, shears in both directions. Graphically, you can see the base plate here, the base plate tab. In this example, the base plate is biaxial, and uh, you can see the blue area is the bearing area. The program calculates exactly the location of the zero stress line, and it shows the bearing pressure at the corners, 1.1 KSI in this maximum corner. Also, you can see here that the effective anchor rods in tension 
are located in this white area, and the program shows the tension force per rod. Also, this can be sorted by load combination. If you click on the controlling option, the program finds the controlling load combination and shows the corresponding forces and pressures. It should be noted that the program is sensitive to the direction of the loads. For example, here which you can enter negative numbers for bending moments and horizontal shears, and the program will use that information in the calculations. This is particularly important in the calculation of the breakout area, both in tension and, and in shear, where the size and the location of the concrete support is very, very important. If we go now to the Anchorage tab, Tension Analysis, here you can specify all the parameters necessary to design the anchor rods in tension. In particular, you can specify here if there's any supplementary or anchor reinforcement in this design. Anchor reinforcement, if any, must be designed and detailed to receive the full tension. Graphically, we go to the Graph tab, then the Tension Breakout tab. Here you can see graphically the breakout analysis. The program shows in yellow the effective uh, tension rods, so the breakout area is calculated just for these rods in this case. Also, this can be sorted by load combination. For example, we can select another load combination, and you know the concrete breakout area will change accordingly. If we go to the shear analysis tab, here you specify three different options to resist the shear. The first option is friction only. The second is a combination of shear log and friction. And the third option is uh, anchor rods only. If the washers are welded to the base plate, in that case, all anchor rods will be effective in shear. If this box is unchecked, only the front rods will be effective in shear. And here you can also specify some reinforcement for shear, either supplementary reinforcement or anchor reinforcement. Again, anchor reinforcement must be designed and detailed to receive the full shear. If we go to the shear breakout uh, tab, you can see graphically the breakout area for shear in both directions. These are the effective anchor rods in shear, shown in yellow, and these are the corresponding uh, breakout areas here, calculated in the program, in plan view and in elevation view. If we go to the detail tab, you can see a more detailed set of calculations, step-by-step -step calculation with exposed formulas and also with references to the, to the code, both AISC or ACI for the anchorage. So all the calculations are included here and you can follow it step-by-step. -step. This is useful for a granular checking of all the calculations. This is shear analysis, uh, the controlling load combination. tension shear interaction as well. We can also preview the report. We go this, to this icon. We can select the condensed report. You can see all the calculations are included and also the images. We can also select the detailed report. This is the detailed report with all the calculations included and the images as well. As you can see, modeling a base plate and anchorage in uh, Azip Steel 5 is very simple. The user interface is uh, friendly and intuitive and can save you time and effort. With this, we conclude the presentation of the user interface of the Anchorage and Base Plate Design module in ASIP Steel 5. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.